Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from MechTech Keyboards. And today, bringing you a keyboard I've been wanting to build since I saw that it was incepted. Today, we're building the Mons Geek M3 in the beautiful purple. I like to think more of a lilac, uh, silver lilac colorway, but they call it purple. Um, it's the third outing, or the third, I should say, aluminum outing from, MT, uh, from Mons Geek, who is an offshoot of Akko. And I must say, I think they've been doing a great job with their keyboards, especially the fact that their international versions are both QMK and VIA compatible. Now, we do have to load files because they're still trying to get their source code into the source tree, as far as I understand, but that shouldn't be an issue here shortly, and I'll let you guys know when that happens. But for right now, let's go ahead and get this beauty built. Uh, this arrived here a couple of days ago. Um, I scooted it into my schedule because I really wanted to get in there um, and take a look at it. Now, I have uh, a silver uh, M2, which is the 1800. Uh, it's actually in the process. I'm, well, I've got a video planned for it. Surprise, surprise. And then we have the first one they released. I do keep them handy. Um, the Monsky Chem 1, 75%, $99, QMK via, knob, I mean, numerous plates to choose from. I think right now I have the FR4 plate on here. It, they're just, they're solid, well-built keyboards. Um, Monsgeek is a sister company or subsidiary of Akko in one way or the other. Love if they did this. Um, offshoot with Mons Geek, which I believe I've, I have never been corrected or told otherwise, but I believe it's the same studio that did the um, mod series of keyboards like the mod 003, the 007, the 005, which were decent boards. Anyway, to not keep on going down the rabbit hole, I want to focus on what I've got here in front of me today, which is the Mons Geek M3 um, in a color weight that I don't have yet. So and I got a keycap set for it. Hopefully it looks good. But let's go ahead and get into the box and see what we've got. As always, these Mons Geek uh, keyboards come really well packaged. Um, so it's not like you're just getting a bare bones kit and nothing else for nine nine bucks. You're getting quite a few things. So this is a. Um, it's interesting. I've been. I first saw something like this on the KBD67 light, but they include this as basically one sheet. For the Tempest mod, um, I still prefer just to do the individual tape, but it's nice that they include that. They also include a really nice um, coiled USB cable. I, I actually like that it's not an aviator connector because I'm not in an airplane. I don't need to disconnect and reconnect real quick. I like the coils, and that's about it. So um, this is a decent quality cable that they include, um, and... I mean, it's a, it's a nice little bonus. I mean, I've seen some of these cables without the aviator connectors for 20 bucks so or more. Now, we do have, here's the gaskets. They said we are going to build it, but we have to assemble it because this is a kit. But those are our sock gaskets. We have some screws here. We have our screw-in PCB stabilizers, which we will have to grease up and build as well. Setting all the accoutrements back in the box. Um, this was below it. We have our user manual, which gives us the basics on building it as well as um, QMK and v uh, VIA usage. And then we have, those appear to be feet. And, oh, those are force brake pads. As far as I can see, these appear to be just force brake mod. So do we have pads for below? I may have to steal some from one of my cases or just make some Not everything it comes closed up uh, we have Torx in there this is the purple or lilac color it is I, I, I gotta say it is so nice I have not seen a single mar dent um, anything that would denote B or C stock um, on these as of yet I've got to say they're doing a phenomenal job on the build of these um, cases or the, the entire thing so let's go ahead and flip it over 
I'm going to go ahead and find me a lid for my screws. It looks like we've got some spare screws and we also have a Torx in there. But let's go ahead and find out what size this is. Four, perhaps? Yep, that's it. And we have some foam. Nice and easy as a JST connector should. With the force break, I see these working perfect as we literally just put these over the hole. And they act as they're supposed to, as kind of like a bumper between both the top and the bottom. All right, so we've got our stabilizers installed. It's always a good idea to test your stabilizers, put in switches and key caps, and just make sure, um, because if there's something wrong, you're gonna have to take everything apart. It's just easier to go ahead and take care of it here. And I speak from experience because I've done just that. So now it's time to go ahead and put this back together. Got the PCB plate foam, and then we have the plate. Now, a lot of times with PC plates, you can just use your um, switches to actually keep these stabilized. But since we actually have screws and we're doing a stock build, I, uh, I will come back and do modifications. I, I love doing modifications and the Mons series lend themselves quite well uh, to being modified. So, but for right now, I want to do as close to stock as possible. I mean, this is stock. Uh, we've even used the um, included I guess gaskets o-ring or uh, force brake gaskets that they include so for right now we're going to screw this back together all right now that that's assembled we are almost at the finish line Again, we're going to keep sticking with the, um, the stock foam, make sure yeah, it looks like it's in the right position. We've got uh, one that's molded for the back, one open saw foam, and one basically it's a almost like a thin sheet of acrylic that makes the sound basically bounce back off so it doesn't bounce off of the metal. All right, so let's go ahead and get this plugged in. cable is just a little bit long but it's not preventing it from closing I just don't like pinching any cables I gotta say this color is sharp I don't like it all right so at this point we're gonna want to make sure to keep pressure we don't want it slipping around obviously the short ones go up front and the tall ones go in the rear. Now I like to do, in cases like this, is to go and do the corners, caddy corner first. So I make sure to give enough room for everything on the cat hair. And here we are. Mons Geek M3 TKL now built, assembled, and with the stabilizers installed. All right, time for some switches and keycaps. Key I had not, as of yet, I've had these sitting here for a minute and I did not get a chance to get to them. I am starting a new switch review format and I'm, I've just been trying too hard to perfect it before I even get going. So I'm going to start and then kind of adjust as I go because I've 
received a lot of good feedback and I just need to figure out the best way to put it all together but I could be spending all my time planning it or just getting started you know sticking with what works cutting out what doesn't so these are the v3s now they just came out with the v3 pros I do believe they're going to be sending me a pack to review um, but these aren't that bad this is a linear uh, light linear with palm stems I believe uh, yeah white on yellow is a great color yeah they're linear 50 grams plus minus five they have a pre-travel of 1.9 and a total travel of 3.5 so they're a long pole and it's a long pole linear and doesn't say the materials but I'm pretty sure they have palm stems with nylon bottoms I think but let's go ahead and pop these out so that we can load them onto the Mons Geek. As Mons Geek is a sister company to Honko, they're kind of a good fit, I think. So not quite a review, but just a quick overview. So like I said, it's got a long pole. It has a pretty nice um, bottom mount. It's not too harsh, and it has a nice um, snap back. Despite these being completely stock, I don't... I hear just the faintest, faintest hint of leaf spring ping, but it's not, it's not anything. I mean, it, they, they may as well be pre-lubricated. Um, it's a nice snappy linear. I think they should sound pretty good in here. So let me go ahead and load these up and then we'll figure out what we're gonna do for keycaps. Alright, so we've got it all loaded with Akos. These boxes can go to my collection. I have a, I have a tower of Akko boxes. I don't know what I'm going to do with them. Anyway, um, funky color combination, huh? Um, I don't know. I think it, it'll be nice, and I wanted to do something Akko with Mons Geek. I thought it would just be, um, it'd be nice. So, for keycaps, I got a set that I've been wanting to get for quite some time on a sale a couple of weeks ago. Cyber. Um, I love my MT3. And I don't know how this is going to look on here, but I, I think it'll look nice. So, I've got a dark purple and a light, um, like a teal. It's, it's going to be interesting, I think. So, let me go ahead and uh, load up these keycaps and we'll see what it looks like in get to the sound test because I know I definitely want to hear what this is going to sound like. Let's get technical. Today we built and took a look at the Monskeek M3, a wired QMK via TKL. It is built out of aluminum, it is gasket mounted, and it comes as a kit with screw and stabilizers that must be assembled and installed. It includes a PC plate, three layers of case foam beneath the PCB, an IPXC sheet, as well as a PCB plate foam layer. There are other plate materials available and coming soon. This keyboard weighs in at 1,994 grams bare bone and 2,203 grams loaded as shown. This keyboard also includes a coiled USB cable of good quality. The chin of this keyboard sits at 23 millimeters from the typing surface 
while the back sits at 35 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 7 degrees. This keyboard is available from Monsgeek.com for $109.99 for the black and silver colorways and $115.99 for the purple colorway as shown in this video. And here we are with the built Monsgeek M3. I personally like to stay away from the term end game, as in, that's it. I don't want to get any more keyboards. I'm happy, and this is it. This is the S tier. This is the ultimate keyboard for me. But if I did actually believe that that was such a thing, because, I mean, we get into this hobby, and, I mean, yes, there are people that buy a few boards. They find the one they like, and they move on. And that's it. They know what they know, but they don't dive into it. And then there's those of us that do. We dive in. We tend to aim to learn as much as we can and, you know, get as many keyboards as we can to figure out what we like. And we can like this one and also this one because this one has XY features and this one has ZAB features. So if Endgame was really a thing, as it is actually, if it was a thing for most of us, I should say, there is Endgame for some people. Like I said, those people that just come in, buy a few keyboards, find the one they like, tune it, and then they're out because they've got what they want until that keyboard dies or they need to update their fun that keyboard. This keyboard, for me, if I believed in that, would be Endgame. And I mean, as is. I, there's still a lot that I can do to this to add more volume and depth but as it is right now wow now granted i am a sucker for mt3 i wasn't sure if this colorway was going to clash or not in my opinion i actually like it i know uh for the i mean you got like neon green on the other side of the color wheel anyway the colors shouldn't work but for me they do maybe they don't they don't for you but this is just Hubba hubba. That's that's all I gotta say. Hubba hubba. Anyway, so we've put this together. The stabilizers um, are nice. I was never able to figure out what those little um, square pads were for. So if anyone knows what they're for, let me know. Um, the extra gaskets just seem to be extra gaskets. I didn't feel like they were much more of a, um, a bounce on them. There is a bit of flex. Um, and you can kind of see it here when I press down in the corner. See how the escape key goes down. Um, it's not crazy. It's for me. It's perfect because I just like the tiniest amount to flex, just enough to where there's a lot more uniformity. I mean, obviously, you're going to have a little bit different at the top and the bottom, and these basically islands of uh, function row keys. But for the most part, I think it sounds. I mean, for using stock switches, that I believe I paid thirteen ninety nine for forty five, so say twenty eight bucks for 90 um and these keycaps were on sale for, i mean i can't believe i got mt3 set for 30 bucks anyway um and i got uh, the oblitsky coming and i got that for 40 i've been wanting that for a while the sa anyway i think it looks really nice i think it sounds great um i am going to <laughs> i have been running the techware um I'd never messed with a techware, and I just did a techware video the other day, and I've been running that one as my daily. And it's, it's a great keyboard, don't get me wrong, but this one has taken its place because this is just, uh, it's a thing of beauty. Honestly, I, I'm, I'm loving it. I will definitely, I'm going to scoot this up on my schedule for as far as coming back and um, doing some modifications to it. I will have to check to see if um, Monsgeek has already sent out the plates or if they haven't uh, so that they can let me know so that I can try to schedule all of that for when I get the plates so I can find the plate and, and see I want to get the best out of it. So today we built the M3 from Monsgeek. And I've got to say, uh, the way this keyboard is looking with this colorway, um, with tall MP3 caps, um, and even the, the Akko Yellow Cream, I, Akko just released a new version of the cream, and they're supposed to be better, but I, I had not tried these yet. They were just sitting, waiting, and I got to say, they actually, there's a little clack in there, but there's some pop, 
and there's some clock in there. I think this keyboard not only sounds really good stock, but I think looks lovely. And I cannot wait to come back to it and do some mods and get the extra plate. So we can see the difference that each different material plate makes to the end sound profile. So uh, again, thanks to Mons Geek for sending out this unit for review, uh, given my honest review on this. And I love it. It is becoming my daily driver as of today. And um, I will probably uh, switch out the uh, switches, but right now I'm just going to run it as is. I think it looks pretty good, feels pretty good. Uh, just a bit lighter than I'm used to, but as long as I'm not messing up a lot, I think I'll go ahead and stick with those. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. If you guys have any comments, questions, please talk to me, share them down below. Um, I'm getting ready to have a channel on a Discord server. Right now, I'm running a Discord server for myself would just add more bandwidth. Um, so. Uh, budget keeps discord server all the moderators we've gotten together and i'm going to have a channel uh, just for myself so if you guys you know watch my videos and you want to just you know come in and talk to me give me ideas uh give me some uh you know feedback you know positive negative as long as you're respectful i'll listen uh so um and eventually i'll have my own discord server but for right now since it's a smaller group of us i figured just having a channel uh, would be a lot easier and um so i will be uh sharing that information here in the near future but i hope that you enjoyed this keyboard again thank you for watching and you know a like a subscribe i really hate to ask but it's not that big of a deal for you guys it's free and it does make a difference for me so that i can get seen more often i know i don't make the flashiest videos but i do my best to make the most informative videos and little by little i am improving my production quality so i hope that you guys appreciate it if you don't though let me know let me know what i can do to earn your appreciation anyway until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on